It's all about the bass, about the bass, no treble. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now, what we have here today is a subwoofer. Uh, this will be the first review of a subwoofer for me. It's a RHEL T5X from the latest series. Well, actually, because it's my first subwoofer in my own system. Of course, I've heard a lot of subs in other people's systems and in hi-fi shows, in hi-fi rooms, etc. But that's not the same, really. And as this is my first sub that I've ever owned and integrated in my own system, it will not be a review in a traditional way. I will not compare it to other subs because I have no experience to do that, but instead I'll compare the sound of a system before integrating a sub and after that. And I'll tell you my own experience and my own journey with it. For example, how difficult it is to integrate it seamlessly into the system. Next, how big of an improvement of an impact it does have in your system and lastly, do I feel it's worth the money? In my opinion, and for my system, that's quite a substantial amount of money. And I do believe that for the most viewers of my channel, not one of these high-end-ish channels where people spend like 10Ks, 20Ks for systems, but viewers of this channel where I talk about DAX costing just a couple hundred of bucks, I think this is a substantial amount of money. And I'll try to share my honest opinion, is it worth it? Do I think that I made the right decision to purchase it and would I recommend it to anybody else? So I'll quickly go through the specs because that's not fun, it's not interesting, it's also not very informative because you can just type in RHEL T5X, go on their website and see all the specs that it has Class A B amp, 125 watts, meaning it's an active subwoofer, that's important. Uh, another really important thing is that you can connect... Okay, wait, I need to turn it around to show you this. So I don't know how this little stunt will turn out in editing, but anyways, now we can see the back of the unit. And as you can see here, you do have low level inputs. These are RCA inputs. So basically, if you have an amp with subwoofer outputs, you can attach it to this. But something that RHEL especially focuses on is high level inputs. And for that, you're using this sort of cable. Uh, this is, uh, I think, Nutrix speak on connector or something like that. And you actually attach this to the outputs of your integrated amplifier or your power amplifier, meaning you're taking high level of signal that's going to your speakers. And RHEL claims that has a lot of advantages, like you actually preserve the color and the ca character that your integrated amp is sending to your speakers. And then RHEL can read that and just seamlessly add more bass when you actually adjust some knobs, but eventually it should integrate really, really good with your system. And that was one of the big reasons that I've decided to go with a RHEL and not with some other manufacturer. Another big reason was Jay, my fellow YouTuber that raved about RHELs and how good they are and how quick, speedy, textury and seamless to integrate they are. So Jay, beware, if I don't like this sub, I'm going after you and after your channel and I'm sending a thousand bots to bring you down. Okay, and just before I end with this connectivity part, really worth mentioning that RHEL gives you this signal cable that's 10 meters long and also a power cord that's 10 meters long. Insane, right? Well, actually it's not. It's a really clever move because this puppy needs some freedom. You need to move it around for the first few days and find the best spot for it. I started in the corner of my room. As Hunter from RAL suggested, I watched so many of his videos preparing for the arrival of the sub. And he said, if you're using one sub, just put it in the corner of the room and then find the appropriate distance. I tried that, it sounded like rubbish. So it's basically an advice for how to get the highest possible output level of your subwoofer 
And you do get that, as promised. There is a lot of bass, it's deep, it's impactful, but it doesn't really connect well in terms of timing with your speakers. When I actually started to think about it, it was so logical, because I was looking at my CAF LS50s, and they were like uh, two meters away from me, maybe 2.2 meters, and then there was whole other one meter distance to the rail. And yeah, that means that the baseline actually traveled 50% longer to get to you and to your ears. And also the baseline is the slowest among all of the frequencies. One of the reasons why like these high-endish speakers like Wilson, etc., they have this stepped uh, cabinet for a speaker that you see that the bass, biggest bass driver is closest to you while mid-range is somewhere in between, and then the tweeter is farther back, like physically, to the, to the listener, because they want to create a situation where all the frequencies get to you and to your ears at the same time. Well, definitely, when I put a sub in any of the corners of my room, I got something that felt detached from speakers. I had a lot of grunt, a lot of power, like huge uh, pressure, bass pressure in the room. And it, it sounded okay for movies, like deep rumbling, powerful, the whole air was moving with, with plodding bass around me. But with the music, I just didn't like that arrangement. It was slowing, otherwise really fast and resolving LS50s, and it was a no-go. So I tried many positions in the room. I started putting this sub close to the left speaker in my room and somewhere around it. And I got decent results. But then I realized that my room is not completely symmetrical and the left side has a little bit more of walls. The subwoofer was more pocketed on that side than on the other side where behind the listening position, there's much more space. So I actually moved sub to the right speaker and I tried several positions around it. At first, I'll put some pictures on the screen. At first, I settled putting it just on the outside of the right speaker, closer to the side wall. And I got pretty decent results there. I listened to it that way for several weeks and I was pretty happy about it. But after some time, I still noticed that if in some songs, like you're listening to a double bass, naturally recording, uh, my favorite, Nenad Vasilic, I'll put again that on the screen, I'd notice that some notes did sound a little bit more sluggish than I'm used to. I would turn off sub, I hear there's less weight, but the bass is quicker and I hear more transients and more edges. So I continued experimenting. And finally, I settled just on the inside of the right speaker, really close to the speaker stand, and I felt that everything snapped nicely into focus there. Admittedly, there was less bass to be felt and to be heard immediately when you turn on the subwoofer, but those low frequencies latched so nicely with, with the main speaker that I was like, yeah, that's it. If I need more bass, I'll just adjust gain. I, I'll play with these knobs, but that's the spot that I like. And then I went on studying the RHEL manual that they gave me and I found out that they suggested that corner placement if you purchase only one sub. And they say it's needed for you to pressurize the room. And they said, no, don't worry about reflection. It's a sub base system. It's not really the base as you think of it, blah, blah. But in the end, they actually tell you here in the manual I'll take a picture of this, I don't know if you see it, to put them right next to your speakers and to try outside or on the inside. And it just happened that I achieved the best possible results putting it on the inside. And then I realized like Hunter is being a little bit of a hypocrite because he's afraid that if you buy a smallish sub, 
that you're not going to be impressed with it. And he says, like, put it in the corner, feel the power, feel the pressure in the room. But if you buy a stereo pair, or even more, if you buy stacks of rails, have you seen these crazy guys putting like three subs on one side and three subs on the other side? And when I say crazy, I mean that in a best possible way. And they always put it next to the speaker. And then he explains, that's because that way it snaps to your main sound the best. Time aligns in time domain, bass notes latch to the higher frequencies and they aligned well and everything snaps into focus. But then I realized that that advice is very different from that that he is giving you if you are using one sub. And when we are talking about that snapping to the main speaker and that alignment in time domain to everything to keep its precision, there is no difference really if you are using one or two. If you move it away, far from the main speaker, far behind, close to the walls, you will get stronger bass, but it will be more muddied, less precise, and it will sound like a subwoofer and not like the natural extension of the speaker. And that was my talk about positioning. Just try everything for yourself, see how you like it. Maybe you're completely okay with the corner position, you like that deep, impactful, pressurized bass, and you don't really care much if it's not like snappily following the bass line of your main speaker. I didn't like it at all. And I also didn't like that Hunter divides his customers to the ones that purchased more of these and to the ones that purchased just one. I think it would be nice to tell you, yeah, that's the best position near your speaker, but if you buy just one and you have a big room, you might not be able to pressurize it that way, and you might have to make some compromises and put it closer to the wall at the expense of timing. And after that initial uh, phase of trying to find the best position, you're left to play with these knobs. And one is gain. Basically, you want to match the volume of a sub because it's an active subwoofer. It has its own amplifier. You want to match it to the rest of your system. You can do that by measuring levels, etc. But I did it by ear because in the end, it's important how it sounds to you and how you like it. For example, I started with a slightly higher gain, somewhere like around 11 o'clock. These knobs have really nice clicks. There's 40 of them on each knob. And that's really nice because you can count these clicks. And that came really useful to me because I was thinking like, okay, now I'm at uh, 11 clicks. I sit, I listen, there's too much bass. I lower it to five clicks. I think, yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that. Now I play with the crossover setting. It goes from 30 to 120 Hz, but in between you don't know where the crossover is really. You don't need it. Do it by ear. For example, for my CAF LS50s and my room, because these two work together, room sometimes amplifies baseline, sometimes it depletes it, you can't just use my settings for LS50 in your room because it's a different room and it has different acoustic gain of those bass frequencies. That said, in my case, I settled to seven clicks. At that moment for crossover, I felt that bass of the REL and bass of the LS50 just blended together and I never thought yeah, I'm hearing that this is played by a speaker and then this is deep bass played by a subwoofer. It always felt like one hole and the bass line would come from the place in the sound stage where like bass player or electronic bass note is located. You don't hear a sub in its place. You just hear its effect on the note that's positioned where it was positioned before you integrate the sub. And that's how it should sound if you want a truly natural high fidelity integration. And then when I put all of these knobs and dials into their place, after a few days, I would think just like, 
I'm thinking that the baseline is a little bit more emphasized than I really wanted. So I decreased the gain knob to click number four. And eventually I settled to click number three. And you would like, oh man, do you even hear your sub? But I'm going to get to that next. How does the subwoofer really sound? I'll start with that, that if you want to, you can definitely make it sound gruntier and more prominent than this, what I'm going to explain today here in this video. So as I mentioned, if you put it closer to the corner, if you dial gain a little bit higher, uh, you can maybe dial the crossover a little bit lower and gain higher, and that way you would get more of the lower deep bass, and it would sound punchier and more physical. But as I mentioned, I really wanted it to blend nicely with my LS50s. And I do believe that with this click number seven, I actually both added a little bit more of that deep bass that's under the 50 hertz to LS50s because I can hear the added physicality of the sound. And you can hear it in any song that has deep bass, punchy bass, especially in the movies. I watched like A Quiet Place 2 and when aliens come down and they start throwing cars around, it feels, I feel the kick of the bass in my gut the way that I never before heard with speakers only. That's definitely something added by a subwoofer. But also at those seven clicks, I set it high enough for it to actually blend somewhere in this region where LS50 still has decent output, but it starts to decline slowly. As I said, I didn't do any measurements, I did it by ear. I just went a little bit down, a little bit up. When I go down on this crossover setting and when I hear that the bass line starts to sound detached from the main speaker, and that I hear that I again have this sort of slightly leaner sound coming from speakers, but then I hear bass like a detached group of tones, I again dial it a little bit up. And I dial it up and up and whole sound gets thicker and meatier. And when I stumble upon the moment where I just feel it's too thick, and vocals start to lose their resolution and their texture. And the uh, string plucks, things like that, doesn't sound as energetic and clean anymore. I know, okay, I added too much bass. Dial it down a little bit. And it's not the exact science. For example, for me, I'm quite okay anywhere from click number five to click number eight or even nine, but number seven or six, that's like my sweet spot. I feel that I get these deeper notes that, than I ever had before, but also upper bass and mid-range feel fuller and lusher. But that's something that you would totally expect by adding a subwoofer. And there are things that I didn't expect. Well, I did because I trusted Jay, Solsic, I think, and yeah, I promised that I will rain down on him if I don't like this sub, but I won't because he was right. When you actually add a sub and you dial everything to seamlessly blend with main speakers, whole sound stage becomes deeper and it feels more spacious. How is that the hack happening? Well, I'll try to explain that with few analogies. In the sound domain, bass, frequencies are the ones that give the impression of really huge spaces. Think of it this way, you do hear echoes of all frequencies, but highest frequencies actually travel shortest. When you hear something that's really far away happening, let's say in the city, what do you hear? You hear like a deep, echoey, slightly muffled, bassy kind of sound. So if something happens like really close to you, let's say one car crashes into another, there are no casualties, don't worry. And you hear that hit, you hear that deep impact of two heavy objects, 
but you also hear a lot of metal screeching and scratching and everything is like and you know that's really close to you but when that happens far far away somewhere like one kilometer in the distance what happens is that you hear much less of these higher frequencies and you hear much more of that bassy impact and that those echoes between the buildings like whoa 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 and our brain is really cool that way it can analyze the frequency spectrum of a sound and it can realize yeah if there is a lot of echoes i am in a room i i have boundaries if there are high frequency echoes i feel space that's close around me or around the instrument we call that air but if there is actually a huge space like a deep church or a deep hall these kind of spaces are sometimes used for a natural like recordings of acoustic instruments the sensation of that deep and big space mostly comes from these lowest frequencies and their echoes we get these deep spatial cues by the baseline traveling there and then deflecting from those walls and coming back to you in case of the music all of that came back to microphone that recorded that session and when your speakers cannot play these deep bass lines and these deep echoes you feel like the sound stage is a little bit shallower than you would hear it in reality and because of that when you actually add a sub even in a song that does not have deep bass like for example i'm listening uh, something acoustic and i realize when there are lower notes i hear them a little bit fuller and juicier but the thing that's not that intuitive and that most people don't really expect to hear are those echoes being observed more easily and then you are tricked into believing that there's deeper space behind your speakers because you hear more of what recording captured what really was going on in that space and this effect is subtle it's not huge by any means and at first i suppose if i would to dial in sub for you and i turn it on you would probably be like yeah i hear something a little bit different but is this really worth this amount of money at first like that first day when i bought it and i was still playing with it i went to bed slightly disappointed i was like okay this is okay but in most songs blues and jazz that i really like the effect of a sub is really subtle it's really slight i can hear it said in grunt and weight and punch when i'm watching movies or i listen to electronic music then it really shines man it, it adds that kick that punch something the, the energy that these little speakers they just don't have but in my favorite types of music that's like low key acoustic things i was like there's not much to it after a few weeks i was listening to it and listening and then i would turn the sub off and i realized yeah something's off and something's off in my imaging i hear all the details but i definitely feel like sound stage just became shallower and more flat and you turn the sub on again and you're like oh yeah there there it is there's that darkness behind them because you feel there's more empty space around instruments but here i'll try to make few visual analogies for example i like to draw you know just take a pen and draw things and for that i actually used two type of pens one was b2 that was mildly soft it was really nice for sketching and making sharp edges like details and everything and when i finish doing that i actually take b6 pen that is much more inky like and with it you can shade deeper blacks and you can add the feeling of tridimensionality to your drawings and that's actually what's happening with the sub and with more low frequencies 
they're shading your sound stage. Something that felt really detailed, like you sketched it greatly with a pen, sub is adding more darkness. It's taking the baseline and it's shading the space, like adding deeper shades around instruments and around tones. In the end, how noticeable is this effect and is it worth 750? euros in my country. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not really comfortable answering to this question. I would say that if you're in a lower mid-range or entry-level system, it's not worth it. Investing this amount of money in any of these components would provide improvement everywhere, including high-frequency detail, separation, like probably better, more natural tonality, etc., etc. While subwoofer, it adds just that small amount of missing frequencies that do add a little bit of grunt, especially in movies and electronic music. It adds a little bit of fullness to vocals and all instruments and a little bit of space and three-dimensionality. And that's actually probably my favorite part. And that's something that people don't expect intuitively. It's also worth mentioning that it makes everything sound just a little bit calmer and sweeter because it changes the balance. And note that previously you heard most of its upper frequencies is suddenly enhanced with more bass. And that all melts together. And in our mind, it feels like the whole note, even high frequencies are a little bit changed. They feel more natural and less mechanical and less sharp. And everything feels just a little bit more natural and pleasant and calm. Is that worth this amount of money? In my opinion, it's something that you should do when you actually feel satisfied with the rest of your system. If you feel that the resolution, the bass control, tonality and everything is really good, feels natural, feels like you're enjoying it, but you somehow lack that deeper bass line, then and only then I feel subwoofer is a great idea. Before that, if you're not happy with some other main components of your system, you feel like you need better resolution or separation or... I don't know, soundstage width, you do not achieve that by adding a sub. It doesn't change your whole system, it just improves it slightly. I'm happy with the effects it brings. Sometimes in the future I would really like to explore what another subwoofer to have a stereo pair would bring to the table, but currently I feel like one is just enough. It, it added what I needed it to, and I'm not going to sell it, I like it. But I'm also not going to say like, wow, this is the next best thing that everybody should have. Because it's really your decision. It is a nice addition to a system that does not have full range speakers. When I turn it off now, I miss it immediately. So I don't want to turn it off. I don't want to pull out of this investment, but is it the cheapest way to improve your sound fidelity? No, it's not. And again, that's something that you'll have to decide. Are you a sucker for a deep sound stage and full juicy three-dimensional imaging? If you are, yeah, it, it might be worth exploring this. I did and I'm happy I did. And with that, it's time to end this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, then click that button subscribe to the channel and also consider becoming a patron that really helps the channel grow and bring even more interesting reviews. See you next time. Bye.